Well, the Book Club is a one-woman romantic comedy written by one of New Zealand's most successful playwrights, theatre legend Roger Hall. Now, originally written in 1999, it's been performed all over New Zealand as well as in Australia and the UK. The script has now been updated for a 2018 audience and Tadpole Productions brings it to Auckland's Pump House Theatre. We have with us in studio Roger Hall himself as well as one-woman dynamo Jodie Dorday. Oh, I okay. keep calling you Jody Dordain. 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 Very French. Very French. Keep talking. He is coming to you. There's so many things that you have written. When did the script writing, when did that really take off for you? Well, I have a talk which is called 15 Years to Be an Overnight Success. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I paid my dues but, uh, and I, I wrote for television. I appeared on television. I did a lot of stuff. And then one day I wrote Glide Time and ah, it just took off. Right. It was like every young man's you know, writer's dream. It just took off around the country. My next play, Middle Age Spread, took off around the country, around Australia, and in, went to the West End. And mm. when you were at school, was it something that you thought you would do? Was that your sort of objective? Well, no, I, I was brought up in England, you know, racked with the class system. And, I, and my parents, <laughs> bless them, took me to a lot of theatre because they loved it, and mm. we all loved comedy, and we read a lot, so that was a great basis. Mm. But, um, and I, I mentioned the class system because I felt, oh, that's not the sort of thing, you know, we people do. Right. But when I came to New Zealand, and I didn't, still didn't necessarily want to, I felt I could do anything. It, it truly was. It made a big difference. And a few years after arriving, I went to Teachers College and, and a university, which had never dawned on me to go mm. to, and it just... I, I'm so grateful to New Zealand for doing that. It's funny though, isn't it? Sometimes you can, you really can reinvent yourself when you go to different countries, yes. and it's just your mm. mindset itself, it isn't is it? It's just mindset, but it's. It, mm. Um, Jody, you came back what from overseas from a couple of years ago because we had you on the show talking yes, about Billy Elliot. Yes, Elliot. Lovely Billy Elliot. Uh, yes. And then after that, you're also back on West Side, Cheryl West's mum, yes. which is back on our screen soon. So yes. how's everything going for you? Oh, look, it's wonderful to be home. Um, and you know, and I, I'd taken, I had taken a bit of a step away from the acting when I lived in Australia and um, lived in Bali for a year. So um, it's fantastic to be back and kind of have a bit of a. A bit of momentum, you know, and, and be mixing up um, a bit of theatre and TV and uh, and you've got to be really careful what you put out there because I've been wanting to do a one woman show for quite some time and and now here it is. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I'm really happy to be back. And how much did you know about this play before you got into it? No, no, no. Well, I've done a few Roger Hall plays, but I hadn't read this particular one and, and also the updated version of, but i um, very happy to be involved. Yeah, what do you love about it? <gasps> what do I love about it? Well, yeah, I mean, it's gone, what? You just about to kick the national treasure. You got me off my side. Sorry, darling. You just about to kick the national treasure off Look, what I like about it is that the, the lead role of Deb is is very um, different to me so it's a challenge to play this kind of privileged woman whose children have left home you know husband's having a midlife crisis not home much there's nothing that needs to be done to the house and she's lonely and she joins this um, um, a book club and um, gets to live out her fantasy her favorite fantasy uh, while um, in, in one of the book club meetings so this woman is nothing like me she's privileged she's her children have left home I'm not. I work my butt off and I've got a five-year-old. So it's really um, challenging to play um, someone that's so different. Uh, you could be here in the future, you never know. Exactly right. A few years in the future, exactly you can right. back home. Exactly right. Can I just say briefly that thanks to Janice, she made me bring it up to date. Because I'm very lazy. Janice Finn, the drink. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. And I, oh, no, no. And she made me do it. I'm so grateful because it, is, yes. it will be much, much better. So how and, was it different? Well, I had to change the, a lot of the book titles. Which meant every club meeting then became a different meeting. You had to rewrite so the whole thing. I had to thing, rewrite really. all of something. <laughs> but I'm hoping to see batting his eyelids that other theatres right throughout the country might have yes. a look at it. Yes. And do it again. Have a look at it. Sure, sure they will. will. The revamped version for 2018. So, so when you research for a play, do you yes. do you do you go to book clubs I and did. find it? Yeah. For this one, I do a lot of research for most plays, mm. and uh, so I went to several different book clubs and found out and there are different patterns. But the one in this uh, in the in the book club is the most common that mm. the group and it's 99% women are book club mm. belong to book clubs and the most popular one is they choose one book and they discuss it so and of course you have to ref choosing the book has to reflect the 
person who makes the choice. Yes. So it's quite <laughs> difficult. And so and not everybody likes it. My wife's in a book club and she comes back and says, oh, that's so-and-so, she, you know, she didn't like that at all. And so I'll be in trouble now. Also, with book clubs, there's usually a, a bit of wine being drunk as well. There's a lot of wine, yes. yes there's a lot of women honest. that go to book clubs that don't really even go to read the book. <laughs> well, you mean, she hasn't even right. read the book. <laughs> they just go for the food. And My the mum food. does. Sorry, mum. <laughs> mum goes to a book club for the food. Speaking of the different characters, because there are different characters in a book club, you end up playing all of those different characters. Yes, I do, and that's the challenge as well. Because, and I mean, and you know, you do get quite diverse. Your research would have done. You do get really diverse women at a book club. They're all from different walks of life, and one book, you know, one one piece can bring out all all sorts of different views, and some of it can get quite heated. So it's a great place to set a play because you've got this group of women that wouldn't normally have anything to do with each other except for once a month. But doing it as a one-woman show, I mean, Roger, what made you decide to write a one-woman show? I can't remember now. Um, I thought originally of making it like six or seven people. Mm. Um, I, honestly, I can't remember. It's but well it, it, felt, it felt... <laughs> well, there are, you know, you go through a lot of false starts mm. and then you think, ah, right, I've got it. Do you have a big box at home full of things that might get finished one day? In here. In your oh. head? Oh. Wipe them down. They're, busy they're, up all, there. they're all like planes waiting to land at Kennedy Airport. Oh, oh wow. eventually I'll say, come on down. Come on down. down. Come on down. Okay. I just said about a friend of mine, a male, who belongs to a male book club, and they meet at the pub. And he said it was really good last night. We never even got round to the book. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that yes. sounds great. Oh, thank you both for joining us. Mm -hmm. today. Yeah, what a combo. The awesome. book club yeah. opens at the Pump House Theatre in Auckland next Wednesday, May 9th, for a strictly limited season. You can check out the Pump House website for ticket details. Go on, do it. You do not want to miss it.